But where are those good old fashioned values? Well, you won't find them here. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 family guy jokes that crossed the line. I'm Bob Costas, here with Boston Marathon winner Peter Griffin. Peter, how did you do it? I'll tell you, Bob, I just got in my car and drove it. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be highlighting the Family Guy gags that went too far, whether they made light of very sensitive topics or were just incredibly disgusting. Expect both mature content and spoilers ahead. Take him out. Now! Check it out. It's a John F. Kennedy Pez dispenser. Oh. Number 10, Jesus's Visit. I'm actually glad you're all here tonight. I want to tell you that one of you will betray me. When Peter learns that Jesus Christ has returned to Earth and is keeping a low profile in Quahog, the Griffin Patriarch invites him over for dinner. There, Jesus tells the story of his crucifixion, which doesn't exactly make for a wholesome dinner conversation. Then, they put me in a hole with a rock in front of it for two whole days, and come Sunday, bam, I rise from the dead. Okay, that sounds like a nutty weekend, but I can top it. Peter convinces Jesus to reveal himself to the world, and the Son of God quickly becomes a nationwide celebrity, soaking up the limelight. While it's not an intentionally harmful episode, critics agreed there's something off-putting about Jesus being portrayed as a reckless rock star wannabe. Well, at least there was one silver lining about this episode. Or have you not heard? Uh, well, a bird, bird, bird. The bird is the word. Number nine, somewhere that's green. He rakes and trims the grass. He loves to mow and weed. Family Guy takes pride in its funny slash unique musical numbers, but this, this is just something else. Herbert, the creepy old man obsessed with Chris, takes the teen out for dinner. We then cut to a fantasy musical number of Herbert singing Somewhere That's Green from Little Shop of Horrors, with him as Audrey and Chris as Seymour. We struggle watching Lucy on a big, enormous 12-inch screen. Apparently, we're supposed to sympathize with Herbert because he's old and looking for love, but that doesn't excuse his constant stalking. All the scene does is take his obsession to a creepy new level, and dressing him like Donna Reed does nothing to help his case. Somewhere that's green. Number eight, Prom Night Dumpster Baby. I'm just a prom night dumpster baby. I got no mom or dad. The scene starts out as a cutaway of a girl at a prom dropping something in the dumpster. And then it gets disturbing. An abandoned baby with a Sinatra-like voice sings the blues about being abandoned, and is soon joined by other discarded infants, all of them strutting their stuff while using their umbilical cords like canes. I miss my mom, but she's at the prom. So I'm a prom night dumpster baby. While the song has a certain charm to it, and the visuals are definitely creative, it still carries a note of shock value by featuring discarded infants left in the cold. This is undoubtedly one of the show's strangest musical numbers, and yet it still managed to sneak its way past the censors. I'm taking a stroll. He's taking a stroll. I'm taking a stroll. Number seven, Vietnam Memorial. And there's the Vietnam War Memorial. During a road trip, Peter and the gang pass by the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. While there, they notice a Vietnamese man harassing two U.S. veterans, boasting loudly about how he killed several of their friends, and referring to the memorial as a scoreboard like an obnoxious gamer. Scoreboard! Scoreboard! Who is this supposed to be funny for, exactly? Not only does it paint Vietnamese people in an irritating negative light, it's also insulting the memories of those who served in the war. Family Guy cutaways are usually pointless, but entertaining. But this one seems like it was made just to mock both parties. Hey, I know that guy! I kill him! He cried like a bitch! Vietnam undefeated! Number six, Brian cleans Stewie's diaper. All right, I'll do it. What are you talking about? After getting locked in a bank vault, Stewie poops his diaper and enlists Brian to help clean up the mess. The two go back and forth as Stewie tries to convince Brian to lick his diaper clean until the latter reluctantly agrees. Okay. 
Ah, don't do it right here! I don't want to watch! What follows is an agonizingly long sequence of Brian eating Stewie's waist, and then Stewie's vomit. While we don't see any of the feces, fortunately, this revolting scene is dragged on further than it should be, and with no music or cutaway gags, we have to endure every second of gross-out humor gone wrong. So... Yeah, thanks. Number 5. Michael J. Fox Cutaway you only have two white shirts? Well, I had a third one, but it got ruined at that wine tasting at Michael J. Fox's house. While recollecting what happened to one of his shirts, Peter makes a statement about a censored cutaway gag. See, he has this disease, and it makes him shake a lot, and what with all the shaking, he spilled his wine all over my shirt, and my shirt uh, was ruined. The cutaway was supposed to show Michael J. Fox spilling wine on Peter's shirt because of his Parkinson's disease, but Peter explains in detail why they weren't going to show it, and then they show it anyway. So, anyway, that's what happened to my shirt. I'm glad we took the high road on this one. What was that? Oh wait, now they're telling me they do want to show it. This wasn't the first time they've made a crack about Parkinson's either, having previously jabbed at Muhammad Ali. Looks like Muhammad Ali drew this. <laughs> what a dumbass. But this time they had the gall to say they wanted to take the high road, only to completely backpedal for a cheap laugh at Michael's expense. I really like the finish on this charade. <laughs> Son of a bitch, what is your problem? Number four, Quagmire's dad's sex change. And while I'm in Quahog, I plan to have a sex change operation. Oh, come on, just be gay. Quagmire's Navy man father is in town, but the others are puzzled by his effeminate mannerisms. They write it off as him being gay, but it turns out it's deeper than that. He's actually a transgender woman in town for a sex change, and is changing his name to Ida. All I've talked about for years with these people is what a war hero you were. And I was. I'm changing my future, not my past. Quagmire's bitter attitude is more realistic. He's uncomfortable and confused by this sudden change in someone he deeply admires. Everyone else's attitude, however, is downright appalling, as they make crude remarks and treat Ida like some sort of monster. <laughs> Brian's reaction is worst of all, making what happens to him in the end all the more cathartic. If I ever see you anywhere near my house, I'll blow your head off! <laughs> Now lay there and die, you piece of crap! Number three, Ipecac drinking contest. All right, you guys, I got eight crates of Ipecac from Mort, all on my tab. Recklessly enjoying his new tab at Goldman's Pharmacy, Peter goes off the deep end and buys eight cases of Ipecac. He then challenges Brian, Stewie, and Chris to a drinking contest to see who vomits first. How's everybody doing? Good, good so far. In a matter of seconds, everything goes south. Everyone starts regurgitating all over the room, and each other, crying in agony throughout the whole ordeal. Oh, oh God! Why didn't anybody tell me? Oh my God, my insides are on fire! This goes on for a whole minute, while we're left watching in disgust as the idiots clutch their stomachs in pain. The one saving grace is the punchline at the end. Who wants chowder? <laughs> However, there is something worse than watching this gruesome display. Watching it in reverse. It's gonna be going... Oh, dear God! Oh! Oh! Ah, what the hell? I don't want it! I don't want it! Number two. You have AIDS. You have AIDS? Yes, you have AIDS. I hate to tell you, boy, that you have AIDS. When Peter boasts about being an ace at delivering bad news, it leads to a cutaway gag of him and a barbershop quartet performing for a patient in the hospital, informing the poor guy that he has developed full-blown AIDS. Not HIV, but full-blown AIDS. While the tune itself is a catchy earworm, that fact didn't make people any less upset, especially protesters from several aid service organizations. As it turns out, making light of a deadly disease with an upbeat song doesn't make a joke any less offensive. Be sure that you see that this is not HIV. The DVD commentary revealed that the song was made intentionally tasteless, so the joke would work. And it looks like they reaped what they sowed. But it's AIDS, you've got the AIDS. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. It's just so horrible. I'm sorry, Lois. 
I thought if I shook him enough, he'd stop crying. I haven't felt a rush like this since I won that marathon. <laughs> hey, Lois, if I was going to kill myself, do I slit my wrists this way or this way? Sideways for attention, long way for results. Number one, I need a Jew. Wondrous dancing speck of light. I need a Jew. With the Griffins facing financial destitution, Peter wishes that he knew someone Jewish to handle his money troubles, obviously playing into old stereotypes. Desperate, Peter starts singing about his need for a Jew, a musical number that features Hebrew imagery and one over-the-line lyric. Even though they killed my lord, I need a Jew. In fact, the episode was deemed too anti-Semitic for Fox, Instead, Adult Swim first aired it after the show's cancellation. Now my troubles are all through. I have a Jew. Hey! The rest of the episode is actually fairly tame and silly, by Family Guy standards, but that one jab opened the door for even more digs at religion in the future. Shalom, Jews! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.